All right, so we should be there. All right, you ready? Welcome to Draper uh, Pentecost Holiness Church. We're glad everybody's here. Uh, we've got some in the sanctuary with us today. We're glad that, we're glad that you guys uh, came out. And uh, we want to start out with prayer. And we want to start out, uh, and then we'll cover, cover a couple of announcements. And then we'll, we're going to dive into what I believe that the Lord's got for us today. And so there are many that, many that we need to pray about. Uh, we have several that have, are still battling coronavirus. And so let's remember them. Uh, I have a, great, a good friend in uh, Alabama who is who is battling this, and they have um, put him on hospice care. Uh, and so <clears throat> let's remember him uh, and his family. Uh, and I'm sure there's many other needs that we have. And so as we go to the Lord in prayer, I want you, uh, if you're watching at home, uh, to to um, uh, um, just. Uh, Pray, pray for those needs. <laughs> Excuse me. And then, uh, if you're in the sanctuary, let's pray for those needs also. Uh, you know, let's just pray together. So let's all pray together. Father, we come to you today, Lord, and we thank you for everything that you are doing, Lord, and how you are healing bodies, Lord, and how you are touching bodies, Lord, and how you are moving mightily in everybody's life. <clears throat> And Lord, we ask that you uh, meet with us today, God, uh, and that you are there uh, with us uh, through through every situation and every uh, trial and, and every problem. Lord, we ask that you just meet with us today, God. Lord, as we are uh, gathered in in our sanctuary, Lord, and gathered in our homes, Lord, Lord, I pray that our our homes become our sanctuaries, Lord. Father, Lord, also those uh, ones that are listening on uh, the conference call, Lord, I pray you would touch them, Lord. Lead them and guide them, Lord, that we uh, that they would be able to see your hand moving, Lord. Meet every need that is uh, that is represented, Father. Lord, you know what's happening, Lord, in our world, Lord. You know what battles we are facing, Lord, and you know how our nation is divided and, and torn apart, Father. Uh, during this time of, of, of um, uh, uh, this election cycle, Father, but we ask that you just unify our nation uh, today, Father. As churches all across this land are gathering together, Lord, to pray and to fast for, for revival uh, and to finish the Great Commission, Father, Lord, I pray that you, you hear our cries today, Father, and that you move like only you are able to move, Father. Father, and whatever the outcome is on Tuesday, Lord, whether uh, uh, wh whoever, whatever man wins that 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 presidential race or governor race, Lord, or, or Senate race, Lord, whatever it, whatever they are running for, Father, I pray that that we turn our hearts towards you, because you are the only one that is able to meet our needs. You are the only one that is able to uh, uh, heal our land. And Father, we'll give you the praise <laughs> and we'll give you the honor in Jesus. Jesus, mighty name, Amen, and Amen, and Amen. Uh, I I hope you've had a great week. And uh, today, as I'm speaking, if I start coughing, don't worry about it. I I may step off and then come back on. I'll be okay. Uh, but uh, I've got water here ready to 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 douse. Hopefully, douse the cough with and stuff. But uh, we are we are my wife and I are recovering. From, from coronavirus, we've been cleared by the health department to, to come out of quarantine and, and all this. So uh, just as far as announcements are concerned, um, we are planning right now, <clears throat> and the thing about this, during this time we have to be very fluid, uh, is right now we're planning to have to, to restart our in-person services next Sunday, November 8th. 
uh, at 10:30. Uh, however, if you don't feel comfortable coming and being in being uh, in the sanctuary, I understand that completely because we we don't really know how this virus spreads or anything. But so we'll continue to do our online, our digital platforms, our, our Facebook and YouTube and and uh, website. And, and conference call and if you're on Facebook or YouTube right now share this broadcast with with your friends let them be encouraged today uh, I believe that, that God has got something for us uh, that that is what we need for this moment in time uh, for where we're at and so uh, let's uh, let's dive into the Word of God uh, we're going to talk we're going <clears> to <throat> read from just one passage of scripture Matthew chapter 6 Verse 33, very familiar passage of scripture. Uh, I love this, pa this whole passage here. <clears throat> uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Let me get in Matthew, not Mark. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. And here's what it says. It says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you, uh, or added to you. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we come to you today, Lord, and we ask for your anointing. Lord, that we are able to hear your word, and uh, uh, that we are able to, to receive your word. Father, I pray for our minds to comprehend and understand what you were speaking to us today, Father. And I pray for our hearts, Lord, that we, that we would be softened to receive your word and that, Father, we, that we would be changed by it and that, Lord, we would be willing to go and transform our world through your Son, Jesus Christ, through the leading of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. This passage of scripture is is in the middle of what we call the Sermon on Mount, uh, and Jesus is talking, and he's taught his disciples how to pray. He's taught them the beatitudes, and and uh, you know he's talked about divorce and and all kind of different things in this uh, uh, Sermon on Mount, and and he's he's talking about in this passage, uh, twenty five through thirty four. He's really talking about our work worry and what we are what we are really doing as far as worry as far as our life is concerned and and as um, I was I was in bed trying to go to sleep one, one night this week and I was I was praying and and a lot of times whenever I have trouble praying I pray the Lord's Prayer over and over and over and over and over and as I was thinking about that I, I thought you know what other passages of Scripture are right there that I that I know uh, in my heart and in my head, and uh, Matthew six thirty three came to mind, and I began to think about that. And the thing about this <clears throat> passage is, is it's really talking about alignment. That that verse, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and then all these things will be added unto you. Is talking about alignment, and the more I began to think about alignment, I I remembered back to my days of of having to install satellite TV. Uh, I for for many years I slung on a, a tool belt and climbed on roofs and uh, climbed some towers and different things to try to uh, get to people entertainment and satellite TV and and I've I've been I've had to be very creative in and how I got to that to that point to. To being able to shoot between the trees to get the satellite between the trees, and uh, I remember one time I was called. Uh, uh, to, they were doing a, an exhibit uh, at a mall, and I thought, you know, there's no way that I can get the, this satellite, this signal through the mall. I was thinking, how can I run the cable through the door? And the mall wouldn't let me do that and everything. And there was, I looked up, and there was these skylights, and I thought, well, maybe, just maybe, just maybe, can we do it? And I called my my lead tech, and I said. I said, I said, do you, hey, I, I called him over. I said, hey, do you think we can do this? And uh, we, he said, I don't know. And we looked and we looked and we figured it out. And, and we <clears throat> actually got the signal through the skylight of the mall to, to, so that this exhibit would work. And, uh, you know, that's just, 
are amazing to me still today because of, of back then the way the, the satellite signals were coming in, it was, it was, they were not as great as they are now. And so we, we, we were able to do that. But it all came about because, <clears throat> because we aligned the satellite dish with the satellite uh, transponder, with the satellite in the sky. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of history lesson on, on satellites. There is a, a, a band around the Earth, and they call this the Clark Belt. And it, this, this came about by Arthur C. Clark in 1945, 1946, somewhere around there, around the World War II time frame. Uh, and he realized that there was a distance from the Earth uh, that that if you set a satellite or an object in mo uh, an object out there, that it could cover a third of the Earth, and so he theorized that if you put those satellites out there uh, at at specific locations around the equator, that you could cover a third of the Earth at at a time, and so with three satellites you could cover the entire Earth. Now. <clears throat> That Clark Belt is 22,234 miles from the Earth. And it's a geostationary orbit, and which means that whenever you set that satellite in place, that it's never going to move and it's going to, and it's going to track with a, a spot on the Earth at all times as long as there's fuel in the satellite. A lot of solar power now, so that's what happens. <clears throat> But, so in order for us to receive our uh, entertainment through uh, satellite TV, satellite TV uh, Dish Network or Direct TV, or there's, there's several others out there, and now there's internet, t internet, internet, you know, and different things, you have to be aligned just perfectly. Now, I have a, a tool here uh, that, that, that I had back from whenever I was, uh, the, my last stint. Of, of installing satellites, and this is a, a satellite finder. Uh, and what it does is you program in your um, uh, zip code, and then it tells you exactly what the azimuth is, what the elevation is, what the skew is, and then you adjust that satellite dish that's sitting on a pole or a mount on the roof of the, or the side house, and you adjust it to that. I, if I remember correctly, I think the numbers here are uh, 47 elevation, and then uh, I can't remember exactly, but uh, anyway, the, the point is that there are degrees that you have to align that dish with in order to receive signal from from the satellite. Now, they've got satellites have gotten very complicated now. They're not only whenever I first started, we were just trying to shoot one satellite, and that was difficult because then we had to use a multimeter and a, a nine volt battery to, exi to excite the LMB and all that fun stuff. But now it's everything's done in the meter. But with that, they were also shooting at three, four different satellites, and so you have to align each one. Now, the beautiful thing about it is the engineers have thought through that and said, Oh, if we can align this one and we can set the skew for something else then all three or four will, will align just perfectly. And that's, that was wonderful. But that's what this meter does. This meter tells me when, I'm, when my signal is locked. Now, on top of that, there was a, there's, a, there's a function in here that I can run through the transponders. Because sometimes the transponders uh, can, can uh, if the site's just not tilted or uh, skewed or, or the elevation is just not right, just perfect, then one of the transponders will fall off. And that creates a gap in programming. And that doesn't make the customers happy at all. So here's, so how does all of this apply to, to Matthew chapter 6, verse 33? Very simple. It's very, very simple. If we don't seek God first in everything we do, uh, then we are out of the line with the Word of God. The Word of God is our meter. The Word of God tells us when we are running out of alignment with God because we, as we read it, we can find out what's happening in our 
lives, in our own lives. And we have to, to, to study the Word of God. And whenever the Word of God tells us, hey, look, he, you know, you got a little bit of animosity towards someone. We have a choice here. I remember uh, we, can either, we can either fix that through the Word of God and through prayer and fasting, or we can go on. There was a, a, a time where uh, one of the satellites, is one, satellite actually 105, was, was getting uh, some problems. And we had to come up with a workaround to, to, to get the system, systems to, uh, to, pro, to, to download the programming. Well, the problem is that 105 were, had some, some programming, so I think it was Spanish programming on it. And so whenever we did that workaround, we missed all that programming. So whenever we don't align ourselves with God first, when we don't align ourselves with the Word of God first, when we don't pray first, when we don't fast first, then we become out of alignment with with God, and we miss something. And when we miss something, then we've got some more problems, don't we? Because then, as we are missing one thing here, we go, well, you know, I really didn't miss it, so it, it'll be okay. It'll be fine if I don't do if I don't do that. If I don't do this, it'll be okay if I don't read my Bible today. Uh, you know, I, I've I've read my Bible for all these years, and I've done what the Word said to hide the Word in my heart, so that I might not sin against God. So it's okay if I don't read today. Well, you may be okay today, but tomorrow are you okay? Are you, are you not, did, you, what, did the Lord not have, or the Holy Spirit not have something planned for you to read today that you need tomorrow? You see, whenever we align ourselves first with the Word of God, when we align ourselves first with God, then all these things that, <coughs> excuse me, in this world that we worry about fall into place. Why? Because when we put God first, everything else has to, fall, has to come in second. I, I've, told my, I've told my church, I've told my uh, people I've worked for before, I've, told, I've even told my wife, I've told my family, that in my life it's, it's God number one. God first, and then my wife and my children and my family. Somewhere down the road, down the line, is, is, comes the church and the work and all this other stuff in life. But the number one thing that I've chosen to align myself with is with God Almighty, because He is righteous, He is holy, and He is merciful, and He is gracious. And we align ourselves that way, then our lives are not just better. You know, uh, sometimes when we try to use the word, say life is better, we, 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 we comp we're really comparing it to something here on earth. But, <coughs> excuse me, when we align ourselves with God first, our lives become righteous. Because when we are righteous, then the Lord is working through us. Now, in our own selves, we can't do that. We have to have, we have to be redeemed. We have to have salvation. And there's only one way to salvation, and that is through Jesus Christ. He is the only way to God. He is the only way to heaven. He is the only way to align ourselves with God. You see, when I was installing satellites, if we just tried to go out there and find wherever we wanted to put it, then we would have a problem. If we just want, if we put it where, where we wanted it, where we wanted, to, where we thought it should go, and we didn't look at the measurements, and we didn't look at the compass, and we didn't look at at the uh, azimuth and the skew and the elevation like we were supposed to. And then we tried to align that thing. And here's the thing. If that pole or that mount wasn't in alignment, if it wasn't level, then there was no way that we could align that satellite with, with the one, one 22,000 miles away. Same thing with the Word of God. Same thing with our lives. If we don't align our life 
with Jesus Christ first. If we don't do that first, then everything else falls apart. Everything else just falls over and, and we don't accomplish, we can't accomplish anything. Uh, we're, we're in the middle of a, excuse me, in the middle of an election cycle. And, and, and a lot of things are, are, are going crazy. And one side says this, and one side says something else. And, uh, you know, friends are, are losing friendships over, over stuff and different things. And it's simply because we haven't aligned ourselves with the Word of God, with what the Word of God I'm, I'm reminded of a story over in Judges chapter 6. It's the story of Gideon. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and, and this Gideon is uh, he, he's just out in the middle of nowhere and, um, and the Lord come, the angel comes to him and he talks to him and tells him to destroy the altar of Baal. Why? Because it was causing the nation to become out of alignment with God. And what we find out here is that not only did Gideon was he called to destroy the altar, the altar of Baal, but he was also called to lead a, a uh, <coughs> excuse me <coughs> to to lead a a a um an army uh, and destroy and it was it was it was three hundred with three hundred men but see the, the it wasn't just that he had he went out and chose three hundred men see he had a whole bunch more out there that were ready and willing to to fight with him. But the Lord wanted to see who could, who would align with him. And it got down to, to even to the ones that, the way they, they drank the water out of the river. Um, and so when it came down, he had 300 men. And then verse 19 says, So Gideon and the 300 men uh, who were with him came to the outpost of the camp and the beginning, uh, at the beginning of the middle watch, just as they had posted the watch, they blew trumpets and broke their pitches, and they uh, were in their hands. And then, then the three companies blew the trumpets and broke their pitches. And they held up the torches uh, in their left hand and the trumpets in their right hand for blowing, and they cried, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And every man stood in his place all around the and the whole camp ran and cried and fled, cried out and fled. And when 300 blew the trumpets, the Lord set every man's sword against his companion throughout the whole camp. And the army fled uh, to Beth Alki towards uh, Zedroth, uh, as far as the border of Abel uh, Micaiah. Um, and the men of Israel gathered together uh, from Nepal. Nepal the, the Patha, Asher, and all Manasseh, and pursued the Midianites. Then Gideon sent messengers throughout the mountains of Ephraim, saying, Come down against the Midianites and seize from them the watering places uh, as far as Beth Bar and, and the Jordan. Here's what happened. As Gideon obeyed or aligned himself with the word of the Lord, the Lord fought the battle for them. If you re reread the story, what did they have in their hand? They had a, a trumpet or a ram's horn in one hand and a torch in the other hand. How do you fight a battle with that? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. You, you can't. But whenever it's that dark, it is night, it's pitch black out, and you see these torches all of a sudden appear, and then you hear all these horns blow, it's scary. 
And because the men had aligned with Gideon, and Gideon had aligned with the word of the Lord and obeyed God, they won the battle, and they didn't have to even raise a sword. When we align ourselves with God, when we seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Verse 34 says this, Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Jesus is telling us, Seek first him. <coughs> Excuse me. And don't worry about tomorrow, because I've got tomorrow. I've got tomorrow. You align yourself with me, and I'll fight your battles for you. Let's pray. Father, Lord, I love you, and I thank you. Lord, we, we are in the middle of, of some battles that we have never faced before in our lives, Lord. Leaders all across this nation, church leaders and pastors, Lord, are trying to figure out exactly what to do to keep everyone safe, Father. Uh, doctors and, and nurses and frontline workers, Lord, are doing everything they can, Lord, uh, to, to make sure that, that the, uh, uh, everyone is comfortable and safe, Lord. Lord, we don't always understand why things go the way they do. But, Lord, what we know today is that we must seek you first. We must align ourselves with you and no one else, Father. For, Lord, you will fight our battles. <coughs> you, you have given us the armor. Lord, you have told us what to do, Lord. And, Lord, we align ourselves with you today, Lord, that we will come out victorious on the other side of this, Father. Lord, we don't worry about tomorrow, Lord. We know that you've got tomorrow taken care of. Lord, we, we seek, but we seek you first today. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And amen. Amen. I want to thank everyone for, for joining us today, either in person or, or online. Uh, if you've joined us online, be sure and like our page and follow our page so you can get notifications that you uh, when we go live and different things. And we'll be live hopefully uh, Wednesday night with, uh, with Wednesday night worship again. Um, but remember, I'm also going to ask you to remember those ones that are sick, pray for them. Uh, pray for God's healing for them and pray for comfort for the families. I thank you for joining us and I pray for you today. If you need prayer, the number's on the screen. You can send a message through Facebook. Thank you and God bless you.